I knew Nana Bonsu uh, um, very well over many, many years, worked with him, um, sometimes argued with him like most people who knew him well would, would have done, uh, um, had strong agreements with him, strong disagreements with him because he was a man of strong um, and, and deeply held views about the world um, because he, um, like me, thought the world wasn't properly fit for purpose and he had come into this world to change it. He was a big man physically, um, but he was a big man uh, by personality and, of course, that meant that he... He, he rubbed people up sometimes the wrong way, but uh, he also uh, was part of making changes in our society. And I think people have to look back um, and think of a young man who'd come from um, uh, a Caribbean background, uh, from, from Guyana, um, those many, many years ago, um, still a British colony in, in, in those days. A um, man who'd grown up uh, with that kind of background, grown up to recognise that... You had to fight for freedom, you had to fight for liberty, you had to fight for the space to live your own life. And he came to a Britain at the time he did, which was still a, um, a, a very um, unfair country in, in many ways, particularly, of course, for new migrants into the country, and particularly, of course, from migrants from um, Afro-Caribbean backgrounds or, for that matter, Asian backgrounds or, or, or whichever. Um, the challenges of, uh, of uh, discrimination, of racism were, were real. Um, it was uh, a, a, an area like this in the, the time he arrived where um, we still did have signs on the, the boarding house doors saying no no Irish, no blacks, no dogs. Um, we've travelled a long, long way and that's, um, uh, and that's a great thing. We've, we've travelled a long, long way and sometimes that means it's difficult to understand the the Manchester and the Britain that Nana Bonsu first came into. Um, a young man full of dreams um, brought his young wife um, uh, to, to to build a, a, a new and better life and, and face the, the different challenges that that unfairness and that uh, discriminatory society um, uh, offered up to them. Now, um, he could have done, I suppose, what um, others might have done to say, well, that's how the world is. Um, we have to learn to live with it, or he could have done what he did do, which is to say, I'm not going to accept this, I'm not going to take it, I'm going to fight. I'm going to fight for justice um, here in Manchester, here in Britain, here in the world. And of course, that's where Nana Bonsu's role in the Pan-African Congress came in, uh, that these are things I know less about because, well, as he told me those stories, it's before the time I knew him, but I knew him well enough when he was challenging authority um, uh, when authority was being unfair, um, when he was um, uh, working with other groups, not by the way, and it's got this has got to be said, not simply those from um, uh, from Afro Caribbean backgrounds, but people from across the the um, the board, but generally people who were um, the dispossessed, those who were at the the bottom of the economic pile, if you like, not necessarily the people who deserve to be at the bottom, but those who life had, had put there. He worked with them to try to to, to improve their um, their own circumstances, to make uh, their own lot a, a little bit better. Whether it's around the um, the rehousing that took place in in Manchester's inner city uh, back in the day, um, when he led campaigns to try to get proper justice, proper rehousing, and proper settlement for those who were affected. Whether it was um, uh, um, something that, that uh, and uh, issues that he had to take up within his own industry as a printer when he found discrimination in the printing industry, sometimes from um, his, his, his fellow workers, and he had to challenge um, that kind of discrimination in, in those institutions. Um, another side of Nana Bonsa, though, I think, was because what I've talked about so far is quite a lot of challenge, quite a lot of saying to authority, you're getting it wrong, quite a lot of saying um, uh, reform, change your ways, and, and that was important. Um, it's also the times when he worked with um, people, worked to build things, um, to construct things. So his commitment to to young people, his commitment to to um, giving young people dignity. Now again, uh, the, uh, a strong focus on on the a proper sense of, of of respect for for young uh, for the young in Manchester in the city from um, from ethnic minority backgrounds. So uh, young black and Asian. Um, uh, children growing up to say, um, actually, 
you're as entitled to a history uh, that respects your your uh, cultural backgrounds. You're as entitled to an education that makes that allows you to make sense of who you are in this world and and who you are as a as a person of dignity, a person of um, of equal rights, a person of um, equal hope and aspiration. Um, so putting forward those as, um, as as positive building blocks, I think, is part of his, his legacy. And of course. More generally, the work through WAOCC, um, both as an organisation bringing together the, uh, the, the, the specifically the Caribbean community so across Manchester was in, was very important back in in that era when um, people's identifications uh, perhaps were back home in the the, the different islands of uh, uh, and of course uh, in his own case Guyana, not an island, um, but across that Caribbean inheritance. But saying there is a um, something in common that, that people um, ought to, to remember and recognise, um, giving something positive for, uh, for those different communities to, to build around, that was important. That was about um, proper dignity, proper respect as well, for not simply for young people but for adults. But of course, I think the, the uh, knowing none about I'm fairly certain that his commitment to young people would have been one of the things that, that he was most proud of. And of, of course there are many many people not so young anymore who um, owe quite a lot to to what he put in um perhaps people who don't even recognize that the things that they are now they could become because he was um he was there supporting them uh, there working with them or working with those who work with them that um, helped them to to forge a way uh, uh, in life that was better you know if manchester is a a tolerant city and by and large I think most of us are proud that we are a tolerant city um, that tolerance had to be earned and fought for it didn't just uh, get handed down from the trees and uh, uh, or with the rain um, much rain as we do have here it was because people did say that in a city like this um, we will challenge inequalities we'll fight for um, decency and fairness and Nana Bonsu's achievement I'm pretty convinced is also um, written on that that tolerance that we've got today. Um, you know, if he was intolerant, it was intolerant of intolerance, and that's not a bad a bad starting point. I think his his accolade, when you look at the many different things he was involved in, um, can be written in institutions. You can do it in, through buildings if you want. The uh, Carmel Road uh, itself as a as a physical structure. It can be. Um, it can be written, uh, and I'm sure books can be written about his uh, his commitment to um, things like education, his commitment to, um, to to different the different projects, the, the the different challenges, even the different campaigns he was part of. I think in the end, Nana Bonsu's real achievement is written in people, and it's written in the legacy that he was part of gifting to uh, a, a generation who are no longer growing up because they're themselves and now the, the parents and the grandparents. Um, so there's, there's children, young children walking the streets of our city who probably don't know who Nana Bonsu was, but whose life has been um, made better, who's been touched because of the things he was doing decades and decades ago and literally all the way through his life in our city and our country until, um, until the day his breath gave out. But I think even as his, that big frame of his gave its last breath, I'm sure there was another campaign, another thought, another um, issue to be taken up, and he'll be there somewhere, um, plotting his next campaign. Um, that's the real legacy, though, isn't the campaigns, it's the people, and he should be very proud of the people that he has been part of forming. Well, I, th I think I went through many, uh, m many challenges to, to the institutions. I mean, Nana Bonsu's politics... Um, you know, would be, well, it's probably my description, they'd definitely be of the left, if by the left you mean that those who say the world is a place that's got to be changed, uh, that we need um, to shake the world to its foundations um, in order to make it fit for, for the people who are there. Um, he was part of a, um, a major campaign around uh, rehousing in the Moss Side area back in the, the time when Moss Side was being rebuilt, um, when he... Um, he and others were going to occupy the, the, the houses until they got a proper settlement from the council. I think in the end, um, that was a campaign 
that that effectively he won because I think people did get a better deal out of rehousing at, at, at that time. Um, uh, the, there were other campaigns that uh, I mean, sometimes when he's campaigning, not against me as such, but when I felt the weight of his his, his words, the weight of his tongue on uh, on my back, because I, you, you could you couldn't always do enough to. Uh, um, to, to, to please him um, and in those things. But that's right, because unless you've got people who do keep at it, if you take a, um, an issue which I suppose in a way um, we always lose on, um, it's, it's the issue around fighting for justice because we've never got justice. The day will never come, and that's why you've got to keep fighting. Sometimes you'll lose those, those campaigns, but um, campaigns uh, um, at times when... We had uh, issues around policing in in the city of ours, where um, the, the the style of policing was um, was massively challenging to all of the the inner city communities, but obviously in particular um, to, um, to to young Afro Caribbean males, um, when the the style of policing was very much like a, um, an army of occupation rather than a, a police service was, that was there to work with the local community. Um, I think Nana Bonsu in those in the, those days fought many campaigns, won some, lost some, um, and w uh, but that golden rule for him was that um, you got out of bed the next day, win, lose or draw, and you start again. You don't stop because you've you've lost. You don't stop because you've won. You carry on because the next day brings the next day's challenges, and that's the that's the message I think that he would want to be remembered by it's not the winning and the losing it's the insistence on um, trying to put yourself in the right position and challenging what's wrong because in the end but the, uh, the the winning takes place over the days the weeks the months and the years um, if you if you have the the short-term setbacks and give up um, you'll never win the win the long term and I think the in the end is is if we take some like policing is Manchester um, does Manchester have in the city of Manchester have better policing today than it did those years ago? Absolutely, undoubtedly, that's the case. Is it perfect? Not yet. Um, but the the challenges that uh, that Nana Bonsu and, and others who work with him, of course, um, were there to, uh, to to bring forward were part of that uh, that that process that made for that long term change. It didn't happen overnight. It really, didn't happen overnight, but it did happen. And it happened because of um, of persistence and insistence that uh, we don't give up just because we don't win on day one. I think there's probably the, not so much instances where we sat on. Um, I'll answer that in a different way for you, if you like, because I'll I'll do this as if you've not asked the question. It's probably better. So you can cut it, obviously. Nana Bonsu and I would obviously find times when he was pushing me in directions which I just couldn't possibly deliver because his demands were always for the ideal. And sometimes in this world all you can get is, 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 is the good enough. Um, uh, and, and that would mean that I'd feel his words down the... Um, his, I can hear him now as I looked at my, my phone and saw his name coming up on the screen and, th and knowing that Tony <laughs> and wondering what's going to be the... The next request, the next um, thing that had gone wrong, the next thing that he wanted me to to work with and to put right. But that's that was um, a good thing. That's a, f a fine thing. We didn't get everything done. I can remember fighting long and hard around um, an, an issue around the funding of uh, of Carmel Road and around issues around the uh, the, the rent and the, um, the, the the rates that were owed to the council, and uh, that must have taken not just minutes or hours of my time, it must have taken days and days and days of my time. And I'm not, I'm not sure we ever got to the proper bottom of all that story or, or ever got it sorted out to Nana Bonsu's satisfaction. Um, so in that sense, did, did I win everything with him? Was I always able to achieve for him what he wanted? Absolutely not. Because I think even if I had done, there'd always been the following day and he would have come back and said, now, let's do a little bit more. And that's probably right. That, uh, that he kept doing that because change comes through insistence, change comes through persistence.